What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. Guys, we're here with the channel Rogue Trotting and I did a video over the metric system and somewhere I'm like, hey, there's a better video out there somewhere. So I looked and I seen a familiar face, you know, of uh, this couple living in Denmark that I did before, you know, and I was like, you know, they, they're pretty funny, have a good sense of humor type. So I wanted to check this out. This video, why the US won't use the metric system American engineer in Europe, you know, I remember being an engineer. I studied engineering my first three years of college. Of course, before I realized, I was like, I don't want to do this. Why am I doing this type thing? But it's not about me. It's not about me. We're on the video. Because the other video I did, I feel like it was one of those, are you, you know, are you smarter than a fifth grader type thing? You know, are you, you know, do you know how much it is, you know? So hopefully he give us some more detail and go into depth about, the metric system so y'all hit that subscribe button send down those recommendations and let's check it out hey i'm mike and today i'm going to tell you why america is never going to adopt the metric system now you may say it's a pretty bold statement but i think i have a little experience on the matter i'm a chemical engineer i work both mm. in the u.s and europe and honestly i can tell you that living in denmark the hardest thing isn't the language the weather it's the damn metric system <laughs> america is never going to change and i'm going to tell you why so, where does the metric system come from anyways? Well, like almost everything in modern European history, it all goes back to the French Revolution. Back in the late 1700s, basically every country and even every little town had their own different sets of weights and standards. That meant that there was no consistency anywhere that you went. And the revolution was all about going to a new modern system that went away with the old ancien regime. The French revolutionaries wanted to go away from the old system that had a whole bunch of fractions and a bunch of different types of weights and measures for different things. They went so far with the calendar to even take it down to an even 10 months, each month having three wow. weeks of 10 days each, each day having 10 hours, and each hour having 100 minutes. They loved the base 10 Dang. system. And so when it came time to doing distance, they decided that it should all be based on the distance from the North Pole to the equator. In fact, one ten millionth of that distance became the standard for the meter. Oh, nice, Denmark, nice. So it made sense for the French to make that change because their current system dated all the way back to the age of Charlemagne. Here in Denmark, they actually <laughs> had a change in the late 1600s where they developed a new system under Ole Römer, who was the chief mathematician under Christian V. And he set up a system that was based on puns and mills and fos, and my favorite unit of measure, which is the toner or the barrel. A barrel was actually a unit of area because it marked the amount of land that could be covered by one barrel of seeds. Wow. But back to France, you may think that once the revolution adopted the new metric system, that was it. It was all over. Well, this is one of the first examples of how hard it is to change people from their old system of weights and measures they're used to to some new and modern take. That, that's, that's a fact because uh, a lot of people don't like change. And you can realize that working at different companies and stuff, you know, because the times change, that company system. Has, so that's the first. And people, uh, a lot of people don't like change. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. You can really, you can really kind of see that once you start getting become a teenager, you can start seeing that because you yourself might not like the change. You know what I'm saying? Changes that's being made, which it just depends if that change is for the good or you know. Most people just complain. To change people from their old system of weights and measures they're used to to some new and modern take. In France, it only lasted for about five to ten years before Napoleon came in and made some changes. He understood <laughs> the value of a consistent on, measure Napoleon. system, but at the same time, he didn't think that decimalization was all that important. He liked fractions himself. So he came up with a hybrid system that was able to Man. help convert people over towards the metric system while retaining some of the terms and concepts they had before. So, given the fact that it came from the French Revolution, it came from Napoleon, you might think that the metric system marched across Europe the same way that Napoleon's armies did. But that's not the case. Again, it's really hard to change people's minds about weights and measures. In fact, across Europe, most of the countries that changed did so as part of either revolution or unification. Mm. Netherlands and Belgium adopted it as they gained their independence shortly after the Napoleonic Wars. In Russia, it didn't change until the Soviets took over as a way to overthrow the old Tsarist systems. And in countries like Germany and Italy, it was part of the unification efforts to mark a new start for a new nation that never existed before. Hmm. You might also think that Denmark was one of the ones that started this thing as well. After all, it's a homo scientific progress and always seems to be on the forefront of history. But it's not true. 
Here in Scandinavia, the Norwegians went first, and they did so primarily to snub their noses at the Swedes that they were under at the time. In fact, it's said that this is one of the quickest laws ever to go through the Norwegian Storting. They only in a few days decided to adopt the metric system, partly to prove that they were ready for independence to be a nation mm -hmm. of their own. So how long did it take Denmark to finally adopt the metric system? It took until 1907, and the adaptation of it didn't really start until the 1910s. So think about it. Here in Copenhagen, Niels Bohr was discovering the orbital nature of the atom, something that would win him the Nobel Prize at the same time he was going home to use the, the Pund and the Fill, all these things that Ole Romer came up with wow. in the late 1600s. Denmark, in fact, was one of the last nations in Western Europe to adopt the metric system. Wow, okay, so, Denmark. So I think that's always pretty interesting to see how things come about, how they started off type thing. But wow, that, okay. Denmark, in fact, was one of the last nations in Western Europe to adopt the metric system. So I know you didn't come watch this video to hear about how different European countries adopted the metric system. You want to hear why America hasn't mm -hmm. yet. And the truth is, it's not entirely our fault. And the reason for that is because there's one country that took a lot longer than Denmark to adopt the metric system. Our forefathers, the British. Oh, I mean, not the British. The British, are they going to adopt some French developed way, system of weights and measures when they have the mighty imperial system? Imperial meaning British Empire? Of course mm. not. So for years and years, even as the metric system grew across continental Europe, Britain refused to do this. In fact, you can still see it today. If you go driving in Britain, you'll see it's not kilometers, it's miles mm. that they talk about on the side of the road. And in fact, if you talk to people in the UK, if they want to talk about how tall they are, they're going to talk about how tall they are in feet and inches, how much they weigh. It's going to be... In okay, so they, they are kind of similar like the U.S. then and Britain. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, because I... See, me, I, because I've known, like... That's why y'all hear me say I'm six foot two. I don't say how many inches or I, I don't say how many other, uh, what I think, kilometers or however many. However y'all do it, when it comes to height, I don't do it that way because I don't, I don't understand it. You know, I never, I never got the chance to look at it that way, you know, but that's interesting. That's interesting, UK. Stone. I don't even know what stone means. So it just shows you that the British still are as reluctant to join the metric system as the U.S. is. The difference, of course, is the EU. Mm. In the 1960s, the U.K. wanted to join what was then the EEC, and to do so meant that they had to be willing to be on the same level as their new partners. So during the 1960s and 70s, they developed into the metric system and built it in under the force of law. At the same time, you wouldn't always see it adopted everywhere. You could certainly go ahead and buy different products by the pound instead of by the kilo, mm. but it was under the force of law. And now with Brexit, that's starting to change. So when you make fun of Americans for being the only country that doesn't use the metric system, remember, if you talk to a Brit, they probably think more on Imperial than metric today. Uh -huh. Aha, <laughs> that's why I said that, see, the UK, UK is still close and similar to the US, so they, so I definitely know when it comes to if I when I visit the UK that I can I'll be able to understand when it comes to this system, imperial systems and all that, I'll be under able to understand a little bit more, you know. But you know, we're not the only one. That was good to hear that we're not the only one, you know. Remember, if you talk to a Brit, they probably think more on Imperial than metric today. After all, when you walk into an English pub, you're not ordering a half liter of beer. You're ordering a bloody pint. <laughs> Cheers. Get out my pub. <laughs> Not the Burger so, King, KFC. How difficult it was for all the European nations to change, and the fact that in the UK there's still only a little bit of a change in the metric system helps understand why the US isn't going to be that big of an outlier. Two for 99. On the metric system. And it's also maybe a little bit of a lie to say that the US doesn't use metric. You find metric all over the US. I mean, as I was growing up in school, we learned more about the metric system than the imperial system. As an engineer, I think it depends because I probably learned, I probably know a little bit about the metric, maybe depending on the teacher science class, you know, that that's the only time, but like just a little, that's why I, I know, still know a little bit, but like I mentioned with the height thing, like. I, I've heard them say it the other way around outside of, you know, feet and inches. But me, I under I don't know how many, you know, feet are in what I think 
If, and y'all correct me if I'm, I, I want to say kill them. I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they do the uh, the height measurement outside of feet and inches. I forgot, but I have seen it before. I don't know if it's centimeters, kilometers. I don't know which one it is. You know, it's not a bright, it's not on my mind right now, you know, but I do. I have seen it before. I have seen it, but I mean, yeah, he has a point. It just depends on where you're at in the U.S. Like people, you gonna like I had teachers, they taught different. So you're not going to get with this teacher. If she was talking, she probably knew the metric system more than this teacher type thing. So it just depends on who taught you. The U.S. doesn't use metric. You find metric all over the U.S. I mean, as I was growing up in school, we learned more about the metric system than the imperial system. As an engineering school, we only operated in metric or SI units. And yeah, honestly, true. if you look on bottles of shampoo or even a can of beer, you're going to see both imperial measures and That's metric true. Measures. That is true. Part of that especially is because the U.S. is surrounded by metric countries. If you're going to market something in both the U.S., Canada, and Mexico, you have to show both sides. But that is then true. Then again, man. when's the last time you want to see how many milliliters were in your shampoo bottle? <laughs> and all that is not to say that the U.S. didn't try to go metric. In fact, in the 1970s, there was a consensus that the U.S. was going to go metric to match the rest of the world. There were commissions set up and laws passed and signs were even put up on the roads mm. showing both metric and imperial measures. It all went along pretty good. In fact, that's part of why when Derek and I were in school, we learned a lot about the metric system. But like many things, it came to an end with the Reagan revolution in the 1980s, as his ethical conservatives didn't want to keep funding some sort of system that was for wussy Europeans and wow. didn't have the awesome muscular American methodology muscular. of in pounds and feet instead. And that's where the whole commission stopped. It was defunded and that was the end of metrification in America. That's crazy. And so that's where we stand today. This is the way that we're gonna operate for the foreseeable future. At the same time, the metric system creeps in. If you watch a medical drama on TV, they're giving them cc's of medicine, not some sort of ounces. And if you go look at any kind of packaging today, it's going to have both metric and imperial mm. system. So metric is slowly creeping into America, even he though it's right. not the law of the land. Let's see if I got something up. And one place that we almost always run into trouble going between metric and imperial is in the kitchen. So maybe you don't know how many teaspoons are in a tablespoon, <laughs> but one way that you can improve your cooking and that we've taken full advantage of is with the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Okay, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that you can join in order to take different courses and sharpen your skills in any kind of video and click on the link in the description. That's right, one month of Skillshare for free to try it out and join this online learning community that we've gotten so much out of. So with all that, do I think America is gonna change the metric system? Probably not. My best guess is if at best it'll be a bit of a hybrid system like they have in the mm -hmm. UK where maybe metric is used for some major transactions or in the scientific community, but day to day people still use the imperial system they grew up with. I mean, after all, America's a country with 330 million people. That's a big market, enough to justify having different packaging to be in ounces and not in milliliters. Facts. Also, you have tradition. I mean, when you get grandma's recipe, it's gonna be in teaspoons and tablespoons and ounces, not in grams and deciliters. And that's hard to fight with. So when it comes down to it, metric might creep into America, but it's never gonna become the law of the land. That's my opinion, at least. What's yours? Go ahead and put it in the comments okay. below. Thanks for watching, guys. Hi, hi. Hey, guys. Thank you so much nice, for- Nice, nice. Definitely, definitely. Uh, I, like I said, I, I, I definitely agree with him. Like, some people don't want to- but he did have a point because I didn't think about it either. But I know every time I'm buying a drink or like he said, like shampoo, anything liquid for sure. It always has it. Well, no, in food for sure, too. Any food, too. It always have it in both Imperial and the metric, you know. But he had a point right there. He had a point right there. I didn't think about that, you know. But it's like we do it. But then again, it's not like the main focus type thing if that makes sense you know but i think it's good to have both i mean especially if you understand but like i said uh with both uh, it's just different on what you learn in school like like you said like with the metric system i probably learned a little but i didn't go into detail like like i said like i talked about the height i'm talking in foot and inches you know, that's why when I tell you I'm six foot two, y'all need, I don't know how many, whatever else, however you do it in the metric system is type thing. But y'all let me know what you think. Hopefully this video explained it a little bit more. 
Uh, for those that uh, thought I should have got a video with deeper, you know, that went into more deeper detail, which I think it did. I think it did. I learned and understood it fully, you know, that 330 some million people. That's a lot of people to change their mind about, but like you said, with the food, pro produce, and everything else, you go into the stores, it's showing both. It's showing both, so we do got both, so that's a good thing, but that's all I have for this video, guys. Y'all make sure y'all hit that subscribe button, send down those recommendations. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Y'all be blessed, be the best, and be you. I'm out.